So this is how you actually use AI to automate your business. Not in theory, not as some hype video. I mean, how to really implement AI into your company or a company in general in a way that's going to save time, reduce costs, and also scale operations all without overwhelming your team or draining your resources. Now, whether you're a founder running a 10 person startup and ops lead inside a 200 person SaaS company, or if you're just looking to service these kinds of companies by helping them, you know, implement with AI, this video is going to be for you. Now, my team and I, we have delivered dozens of automation projects for small businesses, medium market operations, and even enterprise level teams. And most of the time, when they first talk to us, they don't know where to start. So they just know that they can't afford to fall behind, you know, with this AI wave coming in. And because here's the deal, like right now, AI is still optional. It's still early, but by late 2026, definitely by 2027, if you're not already using AI inside of your business, I promise you will be playing catch up and the companies who did it right the first time, they'll be so miles ahead. So you won't have an option but to use AI by then. So today I'm just going to walk you through our actual framework that we use within our companies to help companies adopt AI and you know get a competitive edge. So this is going to be literally what we use with our clients to discover prioritize and also implement AI systems that are going to really move the needle for them. Now to get started, let's talk about why most businesses get stuck with AI. Well, first, they're often overwhelmed. So they hear about ChatGPT or all these AI agents, a huge term nowadays, which I mean, it's being grossly misused. But in any case, they hear about these agents, custom GPTs, Claude, LLM, Olama, vector databases, embedding strategies. You know, it's, it's just too much, too fast. So you start thinking like, okay, well, we need this, but we are not open AI. We don't have that budget. So where do we even begin? And then there's that fear of wasting money. So building something that your team does not use or hiring a developer to build a chatbot or just an agent that doesn't actually save you time. Second, they don't know what is actually possible. So they are not technical. So if everything just feels like magic in a sense. And third, they're looking at AI in sort of isolation. So they want to be implementing AI the way that they might implement a CRM or a payment gateway, you know, without realizing that AI isn't a tool. It's more so a capability. It needs to be embedded into real workflows and integrated properly. So otherwise, it's just a novelty for that company. And I'll say this too, that most people drastically overcomplicate this. So you don't need to go build a super agent from day one. You don't even need a development team. You just need a system for identifying where AI can actually add value for you and your team. And then from there, it's just executing. And that's why we always start start with outcomes. Always. I mean, most teams, they get paralyzed because they try to just jump into these tools before actually understanding what needs to be solved or worse, like they're treating AI like a silver bullet instead of what it actually is. And I mean, literally, it's just a strategic lever for operational clarity and uh, execution. Now, I'm just going to say this, that we are seeing a pretty big divide form rapidly. Now, the businesses that have adopted AI, even in some basic operational ways, they are already moving faster and making fewer mistakes and also scaling more efficiently. And this gap between AI active and AI passive companies, it's widening every quarter. So here's an example. We've worked with a B2B software company that was just losing hours every single week, just qualifying inbound demo requests. Now their SDRs, they were manually reviewing these forms, cross-referencing their LinkedIn's and doing some light research before deciding if it was actually worth uh, scheduling a call with this person. Now, what we've done, we built an agent that handled this entire pre-qualification system or process, I should say. It took form data, enriched it via just some API with LinkedIn and Crunchbase data. It then scored the lead and if it passed, it just auto scheduled the call and dropped it into their CRM essentially with you know, the necessary notes. So they cut about 80% of the manual work within this process. And they also increased their total meetings by roughly 35% without having to add to their headcount, obviously besides hiring us, but within a completely different space, we worked with a law firm who was highly process driven. So what we did was we automated their case intake process using AI form parsing and also role-based routing. And the result from this was just ultimately faster case assignments, fewer client drop-offs, and more hours spent on actual legal work. So these are not just massive high-tech companies. These are real businesses using real workflows. And now these workflows 
are actually smarter. Anyways, let's just walk through the exact framework that we use with them and what we currently use for our ongoing clients. So here's how we do it. We go through six steps. They're all clear, pretty focused and repeatable. Now, the first one is to align on the business outcomes. So what are their goals? What is everything you want to achieve? Second, we map the workflows. Third, we break those workflows down into tasks. Four, we identify automation opportunities. We then prioritize what to build. And lastly, we execute and scale. So let's just go ahead and go step by step through each individual one. All right, now step one, we start at the top. What is this company actually trying to accomplish? Not vague ambitions like scale operations or just become more efficient. I mean, actually clear, quantifiable, needle moving business outcomes. And we kick this off by getting on a focused call with stakeholders, usually just department heads, founders, or maybe any other operation leads. And we ask the questions that are actually going to get us places. So we're cutting through the noise. Like what are the three metrics that define uh, success for your teams? And where are those metrics today? Where do you need them to be in the next 90 days? And so on. In questions like this, it immediately reframes the discussion around impact. So for example, if we were working with a bootstrapped SaaS company, now the sales team might say, we need to close $180,000 in new annual recurring revenue each month and respond with something like our current close rate is 25%, but we want to get this to 35%. So for customer service, maybe it's we are resolving support tickets in about 12 hours. And we want to get that to under four hours with no drop in quality. So we're not guessing here. We are getting hyper specific. And these are the North Stars, essentially, as cliche or dumb that might sound. These are the North Stars and everything that we automate, everything that we build, it has to serve these outcomes. And it's all very strategic. And when we run our AI discovery audit, as we call it, with a new client or somebody that we're just starting to work with, this is where we always begin. You know, without this alignment, you risk building shiny tools that don't actually drive results. And I'm sure, um, you know, if you run a company, you've probably been there where you've built something that you didn't need and you spent a lot of money on it, spent a lot of time on it. So once we actually define the business outcomes, we drop down one level to look at what's actually happening day to day inside of this organization and how we actually do this is through short interviews so i mean do it however you guys would like this is what we do so about 30 to 45 minutes with the people on the front lines so reps from sales marketing customer support finance operations whoever is closest to those workflows what we do is we ask them to walk us through their daily or their weekly routines. So what platforms do they open first? What recurring tasks are you handling? Where does the time go? You know, what creates the most friction? And we aren't just asking, what do you do? We are asking, what do you do that is going to be contributing directly to those KPIs or those outcomes that we were highlighting earlier, you know, just talking about. Let's take a fast growing consumer. So sometimes what we actually do if we can't get clear about some things is we implement a software that's going to be tracking their time. Basically what it does is it's as simple as it sounds. We implement the software onto each employee's computer and it's going to track everything that they're doing. And we can come back after a week or two and really diagnose like, okay, they're spending this on this. And we just kind of ask them like, okay, what is this that you're spending time on? Why is it taking this long? So that's it for like really trying to get a clear analytical and get just get granular about every single thing that a company is doing. Now let's take a fast growing consumer subscription brand. We can talk to their marketing team. They're maybe managing weekly content calendars, scheduling influencer drops, monitoring uh, trends or TikTok, uploading new videos to Instagram reels and also creating email campaigns. Then we talk to the operations team. So they are reviewing Shopify inventory, checking their supplier communications in Slack, updating forecasts in Google Sheets and the support team. Well, they're triaging Zendesk tickets, issuing refunds, maybe sending shipping updates, handling any DMs and these workflows, they're often spread across five to 10 different platforms and they're all performed manually. All are filled with repetitive steps. Now it's our job to just document each one, tie it back to all the different outcomes and look for these patterns. And this is where the real leverage actually starts to show up within the organization or within the project, I guess we could frame it as. All right, now step three, we are just going to be breaking everything down into tasks. So this is where we are just zooming in even closer because things like content posting or sales follow up, they're still too high level to actually automate. So we just need to break these workflows into granular repeatable tasks. 
And these are the atomic units of our work. So instead of saying like follow up with the inbound lead, we're going to document to open the CRM, then find the recent lead, verify if they meet the ICP criteria, and then we could check the activity log and draft follow-up based on their demo request and also send them an email and log the note into the CRM. And with this, now we're working with something that can be augmented or replaced. So we collect the input, like what kicks off the task, then the decision logic, like what conditions are checked, then the output, like what results get produced and the platforms used like Gmail, Notion, uh, Intercom and the frequency. So how often is this being done per week? So here's another example, like weekly performance reporting for a marketing team, something like this. It sounds simple, but the actual task chain might be like pull ad spend from Meta Dashboard and then pull the lead volume from HubSpot CRM and then export the CSV, paste into Google Sheets, then clean the data, generate the summary and everything, and then write the performance, paste into Notion. So that is seven tools. That's five decision points and usually hours of manual labor. And when we break it into tasks like this, it gives us precise points to actually inject automation. So this process, it also helps clarify edge cases like which exceptions truly need human judgment and which can just be safely handled by rules or maybe different prompts just given to chat GPT. Okay, now step four, this is where we just leverage our expertise and this is spotting AI opportunities. This is really where we're putting on our AI lens essentially. So we go through every task and we ask critical questions like is the input structured enough for a model to interpret? Is the output predictable enough for a system to generate? Or are the decisions made based on rules, SOP, or logic that can be taught via prompt engineering or some custom sort of logic? And is this task repeated often enough to justify actually automating it? If the answer is yes to all of it, then we flag it as a prime candidate. So one of my last points there, is it worth automating? So are you spending enough time on this? A lot of the times, like when we first started building up these AI solutions for different companies, we would just build it out because it was flashy and it was new. But you know, one thing that we learned very quickly is that we can't keep them on retainer if we're not providing providing value, providing some sort of return. Like at the end of the day, we're building something out and it takes us a few weeks and it costs them $5,000 and it's only saving them I don't know, an hour a week, well, we have to seriously reevaluate what we are doing to justify that retainer. So some examples from past projects, well, auto tagging incoming support tickets based on urgency and topics using ChatGPT, and summarizing client onboarding notes into CRM ready fields, then converting recorded Zoom calls into structured meeting notes, rewriting these blog posts into LinkedIn threads, and all of these, they aren't moonshots. These are just simple, structured, and obviously useful. And even the complex tasks like summarizing a legal document or maybe uh, prioritizing sales leads, all of these are doable when broken down into just smaller pieces and given the proper guardrails. What we also do is we identify where automation tools like N8N or Make.com or Zapier or just custom built agents can actually glue multiple platforms together. So just combining everything and making it cohesive. And also just as important, we flag what should not be automated. So like I was going over earlier, like it'd be nice and convenient to do this, but for the time being, it's not generating a high enough return for us to actually automate it. Like we're not going to get anything out of this, but not every task is just worth it at the end of the day. So once we actually go through this step, we have built a map of your entire organization's automation potential. And we have categorized and labeled just about everything that there is. And this is the system that I implore you to do for your own company or for companies that you're about to sell these solutions to. Step five is to prioritize for the most impact. I mean, it's really just a time to be strategic and think critically if we haven't been thinking critically enough beforehand. So what I mean by this is not everything should be done at once. So what we do is we stack rank every candidate by effort, impact, and internal visibility. So effort is the build complexity. Like, do we need a developer or can we use no code for this? Impact, on the other hand, it's about time saved, errors reduced, or revenue gained. Visibility matters too, because if this is the first AI build inside of the company, well, we want it to create internal 
excitement essentially, and also trust. So we classify these use cases in these three different buckets. So first quick wins, you know, these are low complexity, high ROI projects that we can actually deliver in about one to two weeks or maybe about three weeks, it depends. So you can think of things like AI agents that are going to summarize calls or tag leads, draft different replies, or even route inbound messages. Second is operational levers. So these are usually like medium complexity systems that impact these cross-functional workflows like uh, content generation pipelines, onboarding automations, or even internal knowledge hubs. Now third, we have strategic systems. So these are just deep integrations like AI customer service agents or custom GPTs for internal training or sales agents that qualify and follow up with these leads from an end-to-end -end, um, workflow. So our goal here is to not just automate everything, it's to actually automate the right things in the right order so that the business is going to maintain some sort of momentum without the chaos or hiring heads where you have to pay 40 to $100,000 in annual fees. Now step six, this is going to be executing and expanding. And this is where we actually ship. So always we start with a quick win when working with somebody. So again, like just something tangible, something that's small in scope, but high in value. So it provides the concept, we build the internal beliefs and everything. Then we layer in more automation. So maybe the first agent is a customer support inbox assistant. That's going to be responding to 30% of inquiries automatically. Then what we do is we build an onboarding automation that personalizes the first five emails based on the customer's profile. So then we are going to just connect it all into a shared AI agent hub that's going to tie into your CRM, into your calendar, also into your email, whether that's Gmail, Outlook, and also your help desk. So this staged rollout, it ensures that teams don't really feel overwhelmed. It creates also a pretty smooth adoption curve. So for example, one of our clients, which was a 15 person B2B service firm. They started with a call summarization agent. And then what they did, well, what we did is we added a content repurposing system that turned those transcripts into actual newsletters. So within just three months, they actually had five AI agents that were running silently behind the scenes, saving anywhere from 20 to 30 plus hours per week. And we did this all without any code, there was no chaos in the organization, just compound leverage. And when the time comes, we help you move from these assistive tools to actual co-pilots, to autonomous agents. And you can think like a sales agent that's going to handle about 80% of lead qualification and follow-ups and scheduling, or maybe a support agent that triages and resolves or escalates issues based on you know, customer tone and customer urgency. And this is what scale actually looks like when it's designed intentionally. And by the way, if you want to get access to this uh, board and everything, then you can check it out in my free school community. And if you're a business owner looking to drive revenue or create operational leverage or have us go through a process like this for your own company, then check out the link in the description where you can apply to work with my team. But in any case, let's finish this off. So here's the truth of everything that AI, it's really not a shiny new toy. If you couldn't tell already, it's really just a strategic capability. So when when you approach it this way, you know, it's anchored to outcomes, it's grounded in real workflows and executed step by step, it just becomes a force multiplier, as you can imagine. So everything's just going to compound. You also gain time, you reduce waste within the company, you improve accuracy, and obviously, most importantly, you empower your team to spend more time on those higher value work. We have used this framework with solopreneurs and 500 person teams. It works because it's not just theory. It's something that we've actually had to go through and, you know, iterate time and time again. So it's execution focused. So again, if you're a founder trying to future proof your business, or maybe if you're an operations leader who's just tired of watching your team burn time just on repetitive tasks, this is the roadmap. This is what I have found to be the best. And I truly believe it's the best out there. And if you're an AI consultant or if you're a builder just trying to deliver value for clients, this is the system to follow. So just start with outcomes, map the workflows from there, break down the tasks, spot that leverage, prioritize with intent, you know, build fast, scale smart, right?
that's the game. And if you want help, we run these discovery audits, we build out these custom systems and train your teams to actually use them. So once again, link is down below in the description for that. But let me know in the comments what you guys actually thought of the system. I mean, we've been using it for over six months, so it's just taken a lot of time to iterate and become the final form of what it is right now. And it's still not exactly perfect, but we believe it's the best out there. In any case, let me know what you guys think down below. Hopefully you found some sort of value within this video. If you did, drop a like, drop a comment, and please subscribe as well. But in any case, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.